Debugging is a skill that all developers should have in their toolbox. So today we're going to take a look at a tip that's going to help you debug your JavaScript code. So I'm here on my site. We'll just head into the console. So now if you're anything like me, when you're debugging JavaScript, you use console.log a lot. It's convenient. You just stick it into your code and you're good to go. And I think there's nothing wrong with that and a lot of JavaScript developers do that. But today I'm going to tell you about the little known brother of console.log, which is console.table. So as you might guess, console.table allows you to log out the data to the console in a table form. So if you have an array or an object, you can then print that out to the, the console in a table, which you can then sort and look through the data in a far more efficient manner. So let's just start off by creating our own array. We'll make the screen a bit bigger. So here we've just got an array called turtles and inside the array we have three objects. In the objects we have name and type properties. So we have Bob who's a loggerhead turtle, Sally who's a leatherback turtle and Amanda who's a green turtle. So now the traditional way of seeing this data when we're, we're dealing with JavaScript is to just console log it out. And what we get is this with a bunch of drop downs and we have to go through it and it's just not very efficient. So we can go console.table on this same data and there we go. We have a lovely table which we can sort by the index. So now it's sorting in descending order or ascending order. We can sort by the name or we can sort by the type and everything is just a lot more streamlined. So now maybe a more realistic example is dealing with an object so in this case we have a very similar to what we had in our array we have we're just using that same variable of turtles and inside this we have an object with three objects in it we've called this one bad turtle hungry turtle and excited turtle and inside each of these objects we have a name and a type as before but now we also have a third property called age and I'll explain why I added a third property in a second. So again, using console.log, we get this ugly output that's difficult to read and go through quickly. But we now know we can use console.table and there we go. And here above, when we logged it out, we logged out the index of this particular object in the array, so the zeroth index, the first, the second. But now when we use this object, we're now getting the name of each object, so bad turtle, hungry turtle, excited turtle, and then the name, type, and age. But if you have a very big object that has a lot of properties, this table can get pretty big. And the problem with that is that it can be hard to read and then it gets to a point where it's actually equally as difficult if not more difficult to read the table as it is to go through the data in the console.log form. So what you can do is only print out the columns that you want. So say console.table turtles and then we can give it an optional second argument and here we could say name and print that out and now it's giving us the index and just the name we've now lost type and age now here's why I added in the third column in this example which is we can ask for just we can ask for two columns and we to do that we give it an array and in the array we just give it the options or the columns that we want to print out so say name and age and we don't want type, so we leave that out. And we hit enter, and now we have the index, the name, and the age, and not the type. So hopefully you can see just how powerful this could be if you're maybe, for example, pulling in some JSON data and you just want to quickly see the data in the console 
and make sure it's the, the data that you expect it to be or maybe you have some dynamically created user data and you can log that out to see what's going on to see if your logic and in in, in your program is correct there's so many uses for this that could be very useful so hopefully you can see anytime you're using arrays and objects that you'll think to use console table and speed up your workflow i hope you enjoyed that video if you did consider subscribing to my channel i regularly release videos tips tricks tutorials and other goodies about code if you haven't already head over to hungryturtlecode.com where i have all of the write-ups for the videos here on YouTube, as well as news and projects and other wonderful stuff. Until next time, stay hungry and keep coding.